I hope you're having a great summer vacation, whether or not you're headed to the beach or, or you're enjoying time at your hometown. I hope you're having a fantastic summer. Today's theme, this week's theme, week two's theme is looking at how media has impacted our interpersonal relationships, you know? And for this week, I've asked you to watch the movie, You've Got Mail. And, you know, even as you watch the movie, you're going to be looking and thinking, oh my goodness, this is, um, this isn't the way we interact with people now on social media. And that's okay. That's okay. Uh, because the way in which we interact with people over social media is changing by the day. Um, ever since the movie, You've Got Mail, of course, that one was focused on instant messaging. Not, from what I understand, not that many people use AI anymore. Um, we have chat on Facebook. We are able to text, and just the impact of, of texting is just phenomenal in terms of being able to develop an interpersonal relationship. I have a teenage daughter, and I, I joke with her, actually not so much joke with her really, but I talk with her about the fact that I'm worried she's going to get carpal tunnel because her thumbs are constantly going. It's kind of like a, some people who get addicted to the video game. She's constantly going. Um, but. By having that immediate access to a technology that connects us with other people, that really does impact our ability to maintain, sustain, and, and just influence how we communicate with other people and how we, we prioritize those relationships. Because, of course, you're not doing that with everybody. Twitter. You know, certainly since you've got mail, we have now Twitter and people are able to follow others and have the parasocial relationships with people in bands and stars of various different types of media, from soap opera stars to movie stars to musical stars. Um, when we follow them on Twitter, we can feel like we're hey, pretty good friends with Kim Kardashian or whoever. Um, we'll get to that particular topic later in the quarter. But in terms of our interpersonal relationships, we, the way in which we communicate with people on Facebook, on Twitter, through texting, um, through blogs, enables us to carve out very unique relationships. And the topics for this, class, the, this week include things like face work, how we present ourselves to others. You know, I think it's very, very important, and I'm not going to launch into a mini lecture, don't worry, but I think it's really important that people realize that the way in which they they talk about others and themselves on Facebook, the types of language they use, the lack of punctuation or the use of punctuation, um, the, the things that get posted and shared on your Facebook account in terms of pictures and things like that, that sends a message to whoever sees it. And people might say, in terms of at least interpersonal relationships, how is that a person that I want to connect with? That, is that a person that I, that I want to... That, is that a person with whom I share the same values? Okay? And that all sends a message. It's all symbolic interaction. You know, um, what Slavic Foden and Jackson tell us in 1967, again, a really old citation that you're not reading for this class, uh, that you cannot not communicate anything you post on Twitter, anything you post on Facebook, anything I look into the camera and say just now, is out there for everyone to see. And that's something to think about. And another thing that goes along with this is the use of boundary management. What is it that we choose to share? What is it that we choose not to share? For example, I have a family blog and I've listed in the syllabus. You can go check it out if you want to. There are times when we've had crappy days crappy days and, and, and things have happened and they haven't gone right, I could go on our blog or I'll go on my Facebook and say, I've had a really crappy day. Or go on my blog and give explicit details about just how bad it's been. But then I stop and I think, is that a message I want to send to everybody who happens to follow my blog or everybody who happens to be on Facebook? And so there are times when I, I pause first and I think, that's not something I want to live on to posterity on my blog and my Facebook. So I manage those boundaries as Petronio tells us. Petronio, Sandra Petronio developed the theory of boundary management. And I decide I'm not going to share that. So it's something I'm going to keep to myself. Or that's something I'm going to share only with my close friends or families, not on the internet. Not sharing with other people. What I choose to share, though, helps to create those relationships, etc. So how do we manage those boundaries? What do we share? What do we choose not to share? And how does that get um, 
enacted through the media. Another concept we're going to be talking about in this class is the idea of identity, and that's closely related to face work. Face work, but fa and with face work, that's those are the steps in which we take to accomplish our face, as Goffman would say, who we are and how we want to be. With identity, it's who that it's a very related concept, but how what our image is. Um, how we then connect with other people, to use Burke's idea of identification, how we connect with other people. Um, and everything we do in terms of our mediated communication does that. Every Twitter post, every email, the way in which we craft our emails, the things we choose to comment on. And as you embark on the readings for this week, as you watch the movie, I'd like you to think about like, especially with the movie You've Got Mail, what was it that they were communicating to each other on the internet through the way in which they guarded their boundaries, through the things they chose to say, through how in which they said it? How did they create these identities that were very different than how they were communicating with each other in person, especially at the start of the movie, Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan? Why can you play with that idea? Um, and then think about, for your everyday life, what kind of message are you putting out for other people? How does that enhance or maybe detract from your own interpersonal relationships? And those are the kind of ideas I'd like you to wrestle with this week. Again, as a reminder, by midnight on Friday, you have a discussion board post that's due. Remember, the early bird does get the worm. So if you are one of the first three people to post, you only have to comment on the people above you. The first, very first person to post only needs to post on his or her um, initial comment and doesn't need to respond to anybody above. Um, after that, everybody needs to respond to at least three people's comments. So that way we can start having a conversation even though we're doing this online. If you have any questions about anything, I want you to just send me a quick email and we'll get to the bottom of it. Otherwise, I hope you have a fantastic week and I will see you for week three. Thanks.